In this video I'm going to show you how to use R to open uh, and see some attributes about NetCDF files. Uh, NetCDF files usually contain a lot of a lot of climate data stored in the NetCDF format. It's like a, a big raster stack. Um, so to start off um, what I want to do is just clear my R memory um, so did I get rid of anything that might be left in there and this will just clear my memory I think it's already cleared back at the beginning of my scripts anyway I'm going to need the net cdf4 library which is ncdf4 I already have it installed if you don't have it installed you can do it like this install dot packages and cdf4 and hit enter um, and I don't want to do this I'm just going to cancel because I already have it installed but that's how that's the line of code you used to do that and um, let's see here the next thing I want to do is I want to get a file to open and so my file name is uh, let's see here NHD data PPSI NetCDF SC PPSI 12 okay so this is a NetCDF file the extension NC for NetCDF um, and this is PDSI, Palmer Drought Severity Index. It's actually self-calibrated Palmer Drought Severity Index uh, for 12, so this is for December. Uh, and these, let's do one more like, we'll do June, since it's June right now. Um, but this is a kind of drought index. And this, these are monthly data from 1895 uh, all the way to, this is probably 2016, uh, since, Ju since June is not over yet. So there's our file name, and then uh, my net CDF file is going to be NC, and we open it simply with NC open, and then the file name. Okay, and then we're going to, yeah, let's, let's go to there, let's run the script run through these things and make sure it works in so RStudio. Control Enter runs a line of code. So I run that line, load my library, file name. Oh, we had an error. Um, I wonder... I'm going to copy and paste this over here just to make sure I get it right. And error, no such file or directory. Well, let's try this. Let's uh, try setting the working directory first to where that file is. Oh, there's the problem. You can't type correctly. SI. And... See, it's saying that I'm trying to load SCP dis. It should be SCP DSI. Oh, but I'm setting the working directory. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Little typing problem. Okay. Now, what we can do is I'm going to go over into, well, we can do NC. Oh, sorry. Go print NC. Control Enter, and so now we have a lot of different vari a lot of different, a lot of data here that came out of this file. Um, so we can see there's one variable, 
and this unit is unitless. And we can see the description is a self calibrated pol polymer draft severity index from 1895 to 2010. That's when the calibration is, the data actually go beyond that. And then we have our dimensions. So we have longitude, 1405 cells, latitude, 621 cells, and then this is day, which is going to be the, let me see the units here. It's the days since, since uh, January 1st, 1990, and there are 123 layers of day. And so let's just take a look at this, see what this looks like. Uh, well, let's go through this first. So we can see our calendar, description. Uh, here's the projection information. And then we have these attributes. Monthly grid data, they're about four kilometer resolution. Uh, the author is John Abatsiglu at University of Idaho. And this is the date these data were last updated. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look maybe at some of the attributes of, of these data. And so we can go attributes and let's see what the variables are. So we can do NC var to give us the variables. And let's see what that gives us. And we can see there's one variable name uh, with data, which is going to be the Palmer Drought Severity Index. So let's say I want to get those data. Uh, we'll call it that. And so we can get the data with the ncvar get command and nc, our netcdf file. We want to get attributes, the variables, and we want to get uh, names. And so if there are multiple names, that's a good way to do it. Uh, I'll show you what this looks like if I just print out this. Well, let's just print out the names. It'll look exactly the same as what we just printed. So we got names, gives us data. And if we go names one, gives us data. That's in case there are more than one, but this is some code you could reuse uh, for various aspects. So we'll control under that and it's taking them into load. Okay, now we've got our data. I'm going back over here and uh, let's just, so this will give us the dimensions of the data. And you can see it has 1,405 rows, 621 columns, and 123 layers. So that's a pretty big data set there. Uh, but then you have the variables and I can print out the data here and you can see that right now it looks like a lot of NA values but if we go let's try a data value about in the middle 700 300 and we'll take the first layer you can see it has a value there and so that's how you can very simply read a NetCDF file in R and extract the data for a variable.